About a millennia ago, a powerful explosive volcanic eruption occurred in the state of Oregon, hurling boulders of rock up to a mile away. As a thick plume of ash rose into the atmosphere, superheated pyroclastic flows incinerated a square mile of forest, starting a wildfire. Then, abundances of ash began to fall, and over the next several hours, an area of 16 square miles would receive 10 or more inches of ash. Such a total in the modern day would be more than sufficient to collapse building roofs. What I just described did not occur at a towering peak seen from afar such as the Three Sisters or Mount Hood, but rather a largely hidden volcano which few are aware of, known as the Blue Lake Crater after its namesake crater lake called the Blue Lake. This lake marks the interior of an overlapping series of volcanic explosion craters which are termed Mars. This is the story of a largely unknown volcano which is considered to be one of the planet's smallest active volcanoes and may one day erupt again. The volcanic complex known as Blue Lake Crater is located within a 150 square mile area of central Oregon, which, since the end of the last ice age, has been an epicenter of largely effusive to moderately explosive center cone forming eruptions of a basalt to andesite composition. Despite lower silica content lavas found at the Blue Lake Crater, which are basaltic, generally being less explosive, the interaction with significant groundwater will always be violent and highly explosive, regardless of the type of magma which interacts with it. Such highly explosive eruptions of nearly identical composition lava has occurred, for example, at the Kilauea volcano such as in 1790, despite Kilauea being primarily known for its magnificent effusive eruptions. Despite its name, the Blue Lake Crater does not merely contain the 2,900-foot-wide explosion crater which goes by the same name. As, on the northeastern flanks of the extinct Mount Washington Shield volcano, there is a cluster of small volcanic vents which stand out in the highly eroded landscape. There, across a 4,500-foot-long stretch of land, there are 13 small spatter cones present which are also part of the Blue Lake Crater Volcanic Complex. These vents perfectly align with the trend of the four explosion craters which comprise Blue Lake and also have the same composition of eruptive products. In other words, they all formed in a single eruption. This trend represents a single, now solidified, approximately 4.6 mile long magma dike somewhat like we have recently witnessed on Iceland's Rikunas Peninsula. This dike formed in the year 665 CE when an intrusion of magma occurred which quickly reached shallow depths in the crust. Perhaps due to a layer of hardened ancient igneous rock, this dike branched off into two segments with one at each end. As magma progressed upwards, large cracks developed in the ground which continued to spread apart. Several explosions occurred and as ash was ejected from three small fissures, a series of small lava fountains emerged. These fountains quickly died down, giving way to the intermittent and weak ejection of lava which built a series of 13 small prominent spatter cones. Then, four and a quarter miles to the north, magma reached the surface of a low-lying lake causing the groundwater beneath it to flash to steam, build in pressure, and violently explode upwards. As a plume of ash shot 20,000 feet into the sky, ejected heavier materials including large boulders fell back to the ground along with gas, generating pyroclastic flows which scorched the landscape in a radius of six-tenths of a mile. This first explosion formed what is known as a mar which was 200 feet deep and 1,600 feet wide. Then, another powerful explosion occurred, forming a second large crater to the northeast. This process occurred two more times, leading to the creation of a complex Mar explosion crater. After the southwestern fissure-based spatter cones ceased their activity, small amounts of lava erupted from the now evaporated lake, creating a brief lava fountain and adding cinder to the surrounding layers of ash. This eruption, the only known to have occurred from this volcano, had a volcanic explosivity index of a 3 and left behind as much as 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet thick of ash next to the crater lake vents. While it is not a certainty that this complex will ever erupt again, the Mars could now theoretically represent a long-term path of least resistance. This means that a future highly explosive eruption could occur if magma ever intrudes into shallow depths in the vicinity with the lake water still present. However, few people live in direct striking distance of a hypothetical future eruption. As a result of these hazards, the U.S. Geological Survey designated the Blue Lake Crater as a low-threat volcano. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron, The Ten Hopens, for supporting this channel.